Well, howdy. <clears throat> I think this is recording now. Not sure, but I think it is. Cameras are voodoo to me. Anyway, recently, 11 Bang Bang, Garrett Woods just did a uh, beautiful video in which he talked about six myths of the tra trapdoor Springfield. And I thought he did a very good job of it. Very, he, he, he nailed it. One thing though in particular, the Wikipedia article on the thing is full of bogusness. I hate to say lies, but uh, a lot of the articles on Wikipedia are just not quite accurate. Uh, I know because I contributed one once and then I came back and it had been completely warped beyond any recognition that of, of my work and the meaning of it on the new article was about 180 degrees out from what I had written. So uh, I, I would have complained, but I thought, well, it's their, it's their litter box. Let them uh, do their business in it. <laughs> I don't care. But when it comes to trapdoors, uh, I would trust Garrett Woods and his knowledge of them, uh, of them and Colts. And his brother Ethan, I would say, knows a heck of a lot about Smith & Wesson. Uh, the Woods boys are really sharp when it comes to their guns. They know guns. And basically they know mainly black powder and the, uh, the Old West stuff. And that sort of wraps up what the, this Trapdoor Springfield was, because they were converted uh, uh, muskets from, from the Civil War. I've got one up on the wall there, a, a Civil War musket. But let me bring this down a little bit. Ooh, let's see here. There. You should see some trapdoors here. This is an 1887. It's marked. It's so the 1873 pattern, I do believe. And speaking of 1873 pattern, this is my other 1873. This one had been in a fire, and uh, I coated it in uh, uh, croil, and then took some steel wool and did this for hours on end. And I finally came up with the barrel. I, I have the the uh, rings, and I have uh, well a few other bits and pieces. Don't have the cleaning rod. Don't have the trigger assembly. Don't have the re the rest of the lock work, but I've got this, so uh, I'm working on it, and I don't have a stock. But uh, the other one I do have, though, this is an actual Allen conversion. I don't, uh, you can't see that from there. Let me move this down just a wee bit. This is an Allen conversion, and it is marked. Oh gosh, I forget the date now. What is the date? The date is on it. There's a flashlight, so I can see. 1865, but this is a definite Allen conversion. Later, it had the stock chopped off by Bannerman. Uh, <clears throat> I know that he took a whole bunch of these and turned them into carbines and had some fancy name on them and, and uh, actually unloaded them from his, his catalog. They weren't selling before that because people weren't interested. This is in 5070. These other two are in 4570. And, uh, <clears throat> oh boy. Uh, I have shot, well, I haven't shot this one yet. I have some 5070s, and I could shoot it. But uh, it, I don't know if you noticed, but the stock has been cracked here and has been report, replaced or repaired with a uh, Phillips screw. I would really like to just take this stock off of it <clears throat> and find another one and put on it, but I've yet to find one. Uh, I found ones that could be adapted, like an old... Uh, uh, flintlock uh, musket uh, stock, but it's not quite the same as a real uh, uh, trapdoor stock, or even a uh, something like the uh, <clears throat> the uh, was it 1858? I forget. I forget. I'm not as good at the designations as, as Garrett is, but uh, I know this this one. Oh, let's get back in here. I know this one. Uh, I had loaded up about 200 rounds of. Uh, uh, oh, 60 or 65 grains, I forget, of F, double F <coughs> or 2F uh, black powder and about 30 grain, thirty uh, cartridges of, uh, uh, I think it was like 33 grains of uh, 3031. And the bullet was, I forget, it was 460. It wasn't quite 500 grains, but it was, it was a big, big pill. And <coughs> I took those out and my cousin who also has a trap door, he and I, just blasted away at that hill for an hours, hours with this. Had a wonderful time. And the next day, my shoulder really hurt. 
I mean, it really, really, I was shooting it both right and left handed. And it, it actually, I had, a, I had a bruise on my right side. Didn't have a bruise on my left, but I had a, a big black and blue mark here. And uh, it, it took a little while to get the, the motions back in it. Uh, but I mean, this thing, it does have some kick. Uh, it won't lock, knock you on your butt. By the way, I used to have a uh, uh, Harrington and Richards uh, uh, trapdoor Custer carbine, it was called. That was a, a, a copy thing they made back in the 1960s or 70s or something that I bought from my father-in-law. But unfortunately, I sold it many years later to buy another gun. And uh, But I've been kicking myself ever since. I should have held on to that thing. It had a uh, single set trigger on it. You had to push it forward to, to get it to set. And that trigger was installed by a legendary Southwest gunsmith named Dempsey Milton, who was an absolute genius. That thing, once it was set, it was like a hair trigger, literally. I mean, you could blow on it and it would go kaboom. It was a, a beautiful trigger. And that gun, well, uh, my, my brother-in-law <laughs> was six foot three and I don't know, about 200 pounds. And he'd, he'd been working as a... Uh, I forget some kind of lawman in in, uh, in New Mexico, but we we were I, he and and my my father-in-law went out to the range, and uh, his name was David, and he got dumped on his butt by, by that that rifle, but uh, I I thought that was hilarious. Didn't hit didn't hit, hurt me, but I boy that thing had it kicked like a mule with a full powered forty five seventy. I didn't I never used a full powered modern forty five seventy. Those things should only be used in like a Ruger number one. They should never, ever, ever see the inside of one of these because they'll blow it up. <laughs> they will literally blow it up. It will pop that right off. You know, they're they're just over pressure. For, this was made for black powder, guys. Black powder, not modern smokeless. You, there are smokeless loads, but they're like cowboy load sort of things in 4570. You don't mess with Newton's law. Not, at least you don't and live. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I just, but I love these old things. They're just, they're wonderful. Uh, I want to, one day I'll have this one fixed and it'll be working again. <clears throat> but right now it's just, it just sits on the, on the gun shelf over there. Oh, well, no, I can dream. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go back to what I was doing, which was working on something. I, I, I broke this walking stick. I'm, I'm old and I need a walking stick. And this particular one, I like because it happens to have a nice little sword inside it, but it cracked near the base and I had to, I got a piece of copper and uh, then I uh, JB welded it on and then put a, a dowel rod in here and put this on it and taped it up and it seems to be working okay now, knock on wood, but uh, we will see. Anyway, happy trails.